Hi, in this video I will show you a Microsoft console app with uh, Entity Framework uh, .NET 6. So this is what we see in the background. It's an uh, application, uh, a .NET application with uh, Entity Framework connected. And uh, when I, I just stop it and start it again, so you will see the data running through uh, out to the console wait a, a minute now it's starting project is starting <coughs> project always starts in the console app here in the program main and then uh, it connects the database and from there it takes from the table articles uh, an article and we see the article here at runtime and when we step through we will see that it's uh, writing the values out there. This is our output console. We see it on there too. Uh, and so if I yeah, you see this running and you see the results uh, in the output. And how does it work? Uh, this works uh, in with Entity Framework. That's, that's great. All what you have to do is <coughs> I will explain it and you will see it in my uh, in my app as a download code. You create an application. Uh, let's stop this one. You go to your application and from there you will say create a new application. I can't do it uh, completely, but you create a new project. From there you typing uh, console app, that's the default uh, where there is no user interface. Uh, and then when you have created this one, let's say in here, let's say uh, console app, uh, and there you see .NET 6 as a, um, as a long-term support. If I would create it, it would say, okay, uh, it's, it stores that stuff in somewhere, but I, I don't have to follow that anymore. And after you have uh, installed it, you will go there to your manage NuGet packages. Under there, you have to add and the browse and then you say uh, Microsoft uh, Entity Framework. You add the Entity Framework core. And you see there is now the six, but you are also able to take the seven. And Framework core SQL Server. So SQL Server is also six. And then you add one file here. I've created a folder with a called database. And I said, here's my application DB context. You drop that file, that code, take all that code in there, which says, this is my name. That's my database context of type DB context. This only runs if you add the using Microsoft Entity Framework core in there, which we have in the NuGet package. And then you drop those two files uh, this is my, of the same name, the class, class, and here of the type class. So this is, uh, these are the settings at runtime, base, called options. So this is, this all that stuff means uh, we are configuring that stuff when we open it or when we create a connection. And there's the next line says, I will create a database set of this, of a, of a type uh, and this is my connected table. This type comes from there. You add a file in here, article DB model. From there you say, okay, I am connecting a table. You say here using system component model data annotations, data annotations schema, which means connect on my database a table open the SQL Server also at that side. And from there, we, you say, I have a class which has is of article database model. And from there, I'm connecting all my files. And there, this is my database, which is running up. You see this one. And from there, this is my table. There's nothing, no secrets in there. And inside there, I have some data. You see those data in here. There's a GUID, uh, a GUID number instead of a ID number, since I'm running it on a web app. 
content title, content text, HTML text, and so on. You see all that stuff, and we have this also in design time. This is my table on my real database. It's a SQL Server or SQL Express. It's a nearly fully SQL Server, but it's called Label SQL Express. And there I said, okay, I have certain idea uh, in Bar Chow 60, uh, 30, 36. Then I have a text with uh, maximum title as long as you, as you want. Default is my title, text, and so on. Uh, all that stuff is in here. And on the same time, you say here on your machine, uh, this is my interface to my table. You say, this is the key. You always need a primary key. Otherwise, you have a problem. The key, and there's that's the name, and in this case it's uh, of type string because I'm uh, my database is uh, uses the GUI number instead of an ID and then say get set empty string for the, all the other values you say here might be a question mark so this could also be a null value this one could also be a null value that's what you see here if nobody types something in then it's of empty type uh, be careful on that stuff. So also on date and so you always sometimes you get a null error. So we have here now a public class article, and it this one will be visible. This model, this structure, is in this file at li where it's connecting the database. It says create a data set at runtime. In this case, I labeled it the same name, and this is the type that's a public class data data set of this public class. And we are connecting it here, and now we go on. Here in my program, we will say, okay, I'm starting my code. I'm saying here that's my connection string to the to my local machine. That's a totally easy. You say server dot backslash means that's my local machine uh, remember in this case in especially in this case when you have a .NET application let's say a win app in win ui 3 uh, win application win app sdk wpf and so on in here you say dot backslash in asp.net core you say dot backslash backslash so that's a totally different, a <laughs> little difference, a small difference, but a big changing. And from there you say uh, SQL Express, that's the name which is written on my machine. That's my name dot backslash SQL Express. That's the same na label. Database is the database. Trusted connection is true. This means yeah, I'm running it local. This is my app. And it it runs local to my the same machine on my to the database on my machine. I am using my same my the database on my side, so one user opens one. And then we have database and we have trusted connection one by one. Multiple active results uh, might be true, so you may call the database several times. And encrypt false, this is on a um, tag which is necessary on .NET 7 or 7 and 8 from there on. Otherwise, you get always a security uh, alert. Then you say database options is a new database options builder of this database connector in the background as this one. This label, put it in here and say this is my database connection. Open it, use the SQL Server string, and then and then these are the options. From there, the options we take say here, create a database connection, and from this database connection, which is now a runtime, we say the database connection opens from the table to list, l opens the entire table to a list, and from there take 100. Internally, it's top. Uh, this means top ta top 100 which is in front, it's not loading everything and then from there it's uh, internally it filters in here and then it does it from right side to left side. 
and then from there it says for each and this one is running and that's a great app uh, you will find that code on my machine I'm um, and because I was looking the entire day for that, that it, uh, that to get uh, an application which is does some service work in the background uh, on the server, <coughs> you see now it's finished. Blub blub. And here you see, close the thing window and then it's done. So this is necessary for service work in the background. Uh, you will find all my code somewhere below the link is my uh, my page where I have all my stuff on there uh, and what I wanted to show in here is this is a .NET application uh, it's not on the framework or the global framework it's on the, uh, it's on the higher level where you're going to um, to .NET 7 and 8 and so on and so on that's the future for Windows application SDK applications also <coughs> it works there and that's a great 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 solution uh, so it's not only ASP.NET Core